In the previous video, I explored how to identify the right activities to start your self-actualization journey and find your calling. This is a crucial step for anyone looking to live a meaningful life. And now that you know how to spot these projects and activities, it's time to discuss how to set goals to achieve them. Having a vision is crucial, but without consistent action, it never becomes a reality. The gap between the life you have and the life you desire is determined by the goals you set for yourself and the consistent action you take toward them. So in this video, I'll delve into the teachings of the Stoic philosopher Epictetus to share with you his philosophy of setting goals and taking action. Dedicating time and effort to a project is no easy task, and staying consistent is often the hardest part. Even though we have great ideas and projects, we often fail to pursue them because of indecision and hesitation. With so many options available to us, we often feel overwhelmed and unsure about which path to take, because we don't want to take the wrong path. We don't want to follow the wrong passion. We want to make sure that what we're going to follow or pursue would be worthwhile, would be the right thing. And the problem with this is that we never actually get to take any action because we're afraid. So we get stuck in level one, in the first step of analysis paralysis and overthinking every single detail of the project. And the problem with this is that we end up going nowhere. And this also has a, another problem is that we fall victim of the shiny object syndrome. Since we don't really know what we want, we, we're very indecisive. One day we want this, the other we want something else. And this hesitation is the main reason why we stay stuck forever in the same place. And that's why before setting goals, we need to be very clear about where we want to go and what we want to achieve. According to Epictetus, it's essential to be clear on your goals. And if you're not, you risk spreading yourself too thin across different projects and end up not excelling in any of them. One day you want to be a salesman, the next day an athlete, and then a content creator, but without committing wholeheartedly to any pursuit. This is the ultimate cause of failure. He says, like an ape, you imitate every passing thing you see, and one thing after another attracts you. You don't think through any of your projects or look at them in the round. You act without purpose and without really wanting anything. Epictetus in Chiridion. So what's the solution? To achieve your dreams, you must choose one thing and go all in. The only way to reach your goals is to eliminate distractions and develop a tunnel vision, to dedicate all your waking hours to learning more and working hard toward a specific objective. This level of commitment is what sets you apart from others who have the same goals. Without this focus, you end up going nowhere. Mastery can only be achieved through intense and undivided focus on a specific goal. This tunnel vision creates the necessary environment to master anything you want. When you pick one thing and dedicate all your energy to it, it becomes an obsession. This obsession is what separates someone who wants it from someone who truly wants it. When you mix obsession, passion and consistent action, you become unstoppable. Being a generalist is appealing because we all have different passions and different interests and we would love to pursue them all at the same time. However, if you follow the message of this video or Epictetus advice, this is not possible or at least not possible in the beginning. You can eventually open up and <clears throat> explore different areas and different interests, but not all at the same time. And it's important here that to not take my message as a discouragement, as telling you to tame your ambition. That's not at all the case. I'm just trying to highlight the importance of focus and prioritization. And to give you a personal example, when I first started my YouTube channel, I was aware that I can't provide value to my viewers and create relevant philosophical content by reading a few books a month. I had to concentrate all my energy and focus and efforts into philosophy to be able to provide as much value as possible. So I had to sacrifice other areas of interest such as sales, marketing, history or politics, things that I've always been passionate about and I've always read about. But I took a firm decision that for the time being, my main focus is philosophy and nothing else. And this means that when I finish this phase of my life, I can go back to discovering these other interests. The notion of sacrifice goes beyond sacrificing other interests. It's much deeper than that. And when you pick a goal or follow a new pursuit or project, you must be aware of everything you'd have to sacrifice in order to achieve your goal. You must think very deeply about it and see if you're ready to make those sacrifices. So for example, if you want to be a doctor, you'd have to sacrifice 
years of your life studying and not earning a sufficient income. If you want to be an athlete, you'd have to give up alcohol, adhere to a strict diet and follow an intense training program. So anything worthwhile has a price to pay. So you must be aware of this price and make a clear decision. Either go all in or don't even bother. As Epictetus said, in every project you undertake, consider what preliminaries are required and the consequences before proceeding to act. Otherwise, you'll make an enthusiastic start because you won't have given any thought to what comes next and then later you'll shamefully abandon the project when faced with some of the consequences. This is a crucial step before engaging in any project. This mental preparation ensures you remain committed to your goal and achieve your objective without abandoning it. Some might view this as a radical approach, and that's okay. However, I see it differently. When you follow what you love, it doesn't feel like a sacrifice, but rather as an equivalent exchange. You give up something today for something better tomorrow. Anything worth having requires a sacrifice today for a better tomorrow, whether it's a healthy body, a sharp mind, or a good income. Nothing worthwhile ever comes easy. Once you decide on your objective, you need to know how to set goals to reach it. And my best advice here is to apply Epictetus' principle of the dichotomy of control. Working within our sphere of control, we're naturally free, independent, and strong. Beyond that sphere, we're weak, limited, and dependent. If you pin your hopes on things outside your control, taking upon yourself things which rightfully belong to others, you're liable to stumble, fall, suffer, and blame both gods and men. But if you focus your attention only on what is truly your own concern, and leave to others what concerns them, then you will be in charge of your interior life. No one will be able to harm or hinder you. You will blame no one and have no enemies. If you wish to have peace and contentment, release your attachment to all things outside your control. This is the path of freedom and happiness. So how can you apply this concept to setting goals? The main takeaway here is to focus on the inputs rather than the outputs or in other words, to focus on the process rather than the outcome. Because if you set for yourself goals that are within your control, you'll be the only one responsible for achieving them. Whereas if you set for yourself goals that depend on outside factors, so things outside of your control, it's very easy to get disappointed and discouraged because you're not the only one influencing the outcome. There's a lot of outside factors coming into play and influencing the outcome. So you can very easily abandon the project because you feel that your energy and your effort, everything you're investing in the project are not giving you any reward because the reward you're fixating for yourself, you're putting for yourself depends on other things. So if you take my YouTube channel as an example, the things inside of my control are the editing, the topics I choose, the books I read, the authors I talk about, the, the numbers of the number of videos I upload. The things outside of my control, however, are related to the subscriber count, the views, the comments, the likes. So by making this clear distinction between both categories, I limit my area of responsibility. I know where to invest my time, energy and effort. And by doing this, by investing all this in the things I can control, I improve the process. And by improving the process, I ultimately improve the outcome. So it's a win-win situation. Whereas if I only fixate on the outcome, I get worried, stressed and anxious. And I feel like I can't get creative and I'm fixating on the outcome, something that I can't control. So it's a crucial distinction between both things. And the objective here is to set all your objective only on the things you can control. If you constantly focus on the outcome, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. But when you focus on the process, that's where you find continuous improvement and growth. Continuous improvement focuses on daily small improvements, operating on the principle that these small efforts will accumulate into significant progress over time. As James Clear says in Atomic Habits, if you get 1% better each day for one year, you'll end up 37 times better by the time you're done. That being said, it's crucial to keep an eye on the outcome because it helps you determine if what you're doing is working or not. And this will allow you to make adjustments if needed. The goal isn't to completely ignore the outcome, but to use it as a guide or a compass, not as the primary focus. This is definitely easier said than done because the reward is what gives you the dopamine kick that keeps you going. It's completely normal to expect a payoff when you've invested money, time and effort into a project. However, the strategy is 
to keep shifting your focus to the process rather than the outcome. And by improving the process, you tend to improve both yourself and the outcome at the same time. When you're driven by a genuine interest and passion for the task, it becomes easier to maintain consistency and enjoy the journey regardless of the outcome. You shouldn't be here for the reward. You're here to become the reward. The true value isn't the journey or the destination. It's who you become along the way. Once you've set your goals, you need to be very clear on the exact things you must do to achieve those goals. Here comes the most important part, taking action. Take your goal, break it down into simple tasks, focus on what you can control, set deadlines to create urgency and make it better every day. That's really all it takes. You don't need a fancy desk, an expensive course or brain enhancing supplements. All you need is clarity on your goals and the determination to achieve them. The key point here is to not overcomplicate things. Simplicity always wins. Taking action is more important than taking the right action. As Rumi said, when you start to walk on the way, the way appears. Focus on your priority tasks by following the Pareto principle, which states that approximately 80% of outcomes come from 20% of efforts. This means you should identify and focus on 20% of the tasks that will contribute most significantly to achieving your goals. In simpler terms, focus on what matters most. You should allocate all your resources, energy, and time to these tasks. Anything else can be delegated or even eliminated. Once you've identified your priority tasks, I want you to set a clear MVA, a minimum viable action. And this refers to the bare minimum you must do every day to progress toward your objective. And by setting a clear MVA, you keep yourself accountable because you know exactly what must be done every day. And you ensure that you keep showing up even if you get very busy and life gets in the way. For example, for this YouTube channel, I set a clear MVA for myself. It's one hour of reading and two hours of writing every day. This is the bare minimum I'll do every day to keep progressing toward my goal, to produce content and create value for my viewers. And this means that regardless of the circumstances, regardless of how busy I get, this is the bare minimum that I will do to ensure that I keep working toward my goal. So this keeps me accountable. I know that every day I'll put in this amount of work. Sometimes I can do more. Sometimes I can write for five hours straight, but I know that this isn't sustainable. I won't be able to do it every single day. It depends on my energy, on my time, on my mood. So at least I'll get my two hours of writing and one hour of reading. If I can do more, I will. But if I can't, I'll be content with what I can do. Your MVA could be a 10 minute workout, 20 minutes of piano practice, or making four sales calls a day. Whatever you choose, make sure to always do it. By doing this, you build confidence and momentum. This concept gives me clarity and direction, especially during chaotic periods in my life. The more you do it, the more it becomes a habit. You become wired to do it every day and it becomes an integral part of your identity. The last thing I want to mention is to be honest with yourself. Sometimes people tend to make their goals vague because it makes it difficult to determine if they failed or succeeded. This ambiguity serves as a shield against failure. By avoiding specific goals, they can avoid holding themselves accountable if they fail. They think that they can't lose if they don't play. Well, they can't win either. This protection from failure prevents them from accomplishing anything significant. The fear of failure becomes the reason of failure. In other words, the obstacle to success. That's the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching until the end. As you can see, all the tips are simple and straightforward because I believe that there is no need to reinvent the wheel and overcomplicate things. The main takeaway here is to identify your goals, set clear objectives and work on them every day. Because in a world full of distractions, it's crucial to protect your attention and focus on what truly matters. Uninterrupted and intentional work are the key components of a fulfilling life. So make each day count and watch your goals transform into reality. Thank you for watching.